Hi guys, Guy in Kalamazoo here, wishing you all a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. Um, just going to do a quick uh, end of the year vlog. I'll probably do a quick one around Christmas time, um, as I normally do on the holidays, to wish you all the uh, Happy Holiday Season. Um, however, I wanted to do a follow-up vlog wrapping up this year, 2015, things that have happened. Primarily, it's going to be with gaming. Um, I'm not going to, like, express my opinion on this video when it comes to the things going on in the world. That's for another time, another day. This primarily is for the uh, gaming and uh, what's happened this year. Things good, bad. Um, and just wrap it all up and look forward to a uh, very nice 2016. Okay. So we'll start out with, um, I'm just going to do my primary games and wrap it up with my opinion for Game of the Year. Now, like everyone else outside of some companies um, that can sit and play games all day, I've not played everything. I don't own Fallout 4. I don't own Witcher 3. So I cannot speak to those when I do reveal what my favorite Game of the Year was. All I can do is say uh, what I play and what I know. So there. Uh, and we'll start out with, uh, and I don't have, I don't have the disc. I brought up some other disc of my prime, and these are primary games that I've played for the year. I'm not including uh, mobile games. Uh, I will talk about some, a few, oh, let me sit here. Okay. A few uh, free to play games um, that I, very much enjoyed, but I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave it just to AAA games. Um, so, that being said, I'm going to kind of go in chronological order, too, based on my memory. Um, as I started out with uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, I don't have a disc for it because it's digital. Uh, I think it was $20 at the time when I got it. Okay, high reviews, and I absolutely loved it. Ori is a very frustrating game. Um, you will die. In fact, in the game, it counts how many times you died. And I think when I finished the game, I started it early on in the year, and I got so frustrated with it, I had to, like, put it aside because I think something else came out. I think I was playing uh, maybe... Uh, the no, it could have been the Taken King, but I think I got back into Destiny, so I started playing some Destiny and some other stuff, because it frustrated, Ori frustrated me so much that I had to set it aside. I had to pause it, set it aside, made me so mad. Um, but anyway, I finally, finally finished it. Um, there's a part where, and I think this is the part that was frustrating me. Yeah, it's when... Yeah, uh, you fulfill a mission, and all of a sudden the water springs to life, and you have to escape the, you're like down in this bottom of this tree, or this world, and you have to escape it, uh, or you're going to drown. There's spikes, there's things shooting at you, it, it's just very frustrating. That's the, that's the part that I had a uh, very big time frustration with, and I actually went back, and yes, I do this sometimes, I'd go back and watch some YouTube gameplay to see how in the hell are people getting through this. So, suffice to say, finally, I think it was in April or May, um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to try it again. And again, it took me about 10 to 20 tries, but I got through it. Now, younger gamers might say, it was a breeze, it was easy. And yeah, maybe about 20, 30 years ago for me, it would have been too. But Ori is beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. The uh, Garrett Coker music is beautiful. That is a soundtrack that is uh, part of my groove music and part of my playlist for sure. Um, yeah. By as, as a side note, for those who watch me do vlogs before, I generally keep my my doors over here, the front door to this room, and uh, the dogs tend to wander around. I just had Kaya. At my uh, feet. The other one's sleeping behind me here. 
uh, Honda. Okay, so Ori, anyway, back to Ori. The uh, soundtrack, amazing. The artwork, and a well-deserved Game of the Year award for art direction. Um, I wish it had won Indie Game of the Year. It didn't, but still, well-deserved. Um, music, beautiful. The story, absolutely beautiful. The narrative. It is a game that, if you're not familiar with it, in the probably first five minutes, you'll be in tears. It, it just, the moral of the story is very, very, very good, too. Kind of kind of like, and I'm not going to get into stories, but if you're familiar with the story of Anakin and Darth Vader, kind of similar to that in a way. Um, so, it, it basically, don't judge a book by its cover. So, and it's something I preach all the time. We're all humans, respect each other. We're all humans that we belong to something called humanity. Yes, we all have differences. We have to respect those. So, okay. That's Ori. Um, so, we started out... Uh, yeah, okay. I'll get into Destiny, because early on, I do have to say, Destiny, I played Destiny early on in the year, yeah, before this came out. I think this came out in September, The Taken King. Um... Yeah, this is a good game. I'm going to speak uh, speak to my thoughts about this game. A lot of grinding, which I don't mind doing the grinding to get things, um, because I'd rather grind than get online and pay for something uh, like uh, the free free to play game. Sometimes I'll pay some stuff, especially, and I'll get to this uh, another free to play game that I'm playing currently later. But when a game is free to play and it's done very well, the developers, I believe, deserve uh, in-game purchases. This game, that's what turned me off about this. When they, And I don't care if it does not affect the gameplay. Um, but they have something cool, they have something neat. You have to pay. And that turned me off. Another thing that turns me off, and um, some gamer friends of yeah, mine that know me know how I play anyway. Um, I'm a lone wolf. I don't mind being part of a team. And once in a while, I don't mind playing multiplayer, being involved in multiplayer activities. But when a game forces you to do multiplayer, team up, be, you know, uh, to get all the good things, do the raids, all that, forget it. Uh, that I don't like. And this game forces you to do that. So what I do with this game is I enjoy all of the kind of single player aspects of it as much as possible. And yes, I get into uh, player versus player, which I enjoy, but raids, uh, I don't do raids. And yes, I am a member of a clan, and the clan went out, we did, I think it was Vault of Glass earlier this year, and they walked me through it, but... I don't know if it's my fear of not knowing what to do and people are going to be like, oh, you fool, you don't even know how to play. Um, and, yeah, I'm not a pro gamer. I'm an average gamer. I just enjoy doing it. Uh, and I shouldn't have that fear, but I'm, my husband, Chris, he's big into, not really into the game. He told me this the other day. He's big into this which he's tired of this now, though, too. But FIFA 16, he plays. And one reason he plays is not for the enjoyment of the game, but it's that connectivity with uh, playing with other people. He's into that a lot more than me. Um, so anyway, Destiny did fill up many hours of this year. And not just the Taken King, but before the Taken King came out, um, Destiny was one of my early on bigger games. Um and that was kind of early winter, springtime. Um, I know people are going to laugh at me like, uh, like, um, why well, you don't play hundreds of games during the year? And, and no, I don't. I probably own hundreds of games, but I don't play. Because I'm trying to think what happened in the summer now. I know I continued on with Destiny because most of my games that I've got here that I'm going to show you are... Uh, ones that recently came out, I believe this one, yeah, I'm going to do these kind of in chronological order. 
Um, and and not necessarily on when they came out, but how I've progressed in playing. Because the next one is this, which of course, so you might have tattoo, it's upside down, but um, yeah, I've got a Lancer tattoo. This is my passion. And what surprised me about this, though, is I'm a huge Gears of War fan. Um, I'm more looking forward to Gears of War 4 that's going to be out holiday, like this time next year, holiday 2016, supposedly, unless they uh, push the date back, which to deliver a polished game, if they push it back, I don't mind, uh, because I'd rather have something that is released and good instead of crap that comes out, which I'll talk about after I get done with this a little bit, my opinions on uh, gaming this year. But the uh, Ultimate uh, Edition it is beautiful, Gears of War. Uh, it's Gears of War 1, remastered, high def. Um, the gameplay is good. It, I don't like some of the game mechanics in it feel too smooth to me. I know that might be a little weird to say, but I kind of miss the clunkiness of playing Gears of War 1 in the way that it it works. This is still the story, Gears of War 1. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And actually, I've not even played through the whole thing this year. I started it. I played it. I've got, I'm maybe around the halfway point. Um, but I, I don't know. This year I wanted to play, I was tired. By the time this came out, I was tired of remakes. Um, I am so over. Oh, let's remake this game. Um, I'm so tired of it. But this one I had to get. And it was the last remake I got. Um, so I've not played the whole thing, and people are probably shocked. Brad, you've got access. And I'll talk about this soon, too. You've got access to all four. And, yeah, I've downloaded them, but I've not played any of them yet. Uh, and coming up here is why. Okay, so... I'm going to say the last three, four, three or four months of this year, I've been into these open world, I don't know what you'd call them. They're more open world, kind of like Fallout 4, I guess, or Witcher 3, which actually is a game I do want to get, by the way. Um, I do want to get, it got uh, Game of the Year 2015, and The Witcher 3, I, it kind of holds more interest for me than Fallout. I do want to play Fallout eventually, um, and people are probably saying, oh, Brad, you got Darth Vader, what about Battlefront? Uh, uh, Battlefront, if it drops down to like 10 to $20, I might get it, just for the experience. Um, but I'll talk about that soon, too. So anyway, I've been into these open world games, and this one here, I absolutely love. This one I might favorite games of the year. Uh, people are like, oh, I'm tired of Assassin's Creed. Oh, it's, it's going to be buggy. And surprisingly, this game I had no issues with at all. Um, it could be because, again, and I'm a firm believer of this, when you put a multiplayer aspect into games, uh, this game does not have any uh, yeah, you play as twins, there's no co-op, uh, no, it, it's not like um, Unity, or, or even uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Assassin's Creed 3 brought multiplayer gaming into it. Assassin's Creed 4, if I remember right, straight away from any, um, Unity, straight away from any online multiplayer, but, well, in a way it was, but it was more four-player co-op is what they put into it. This, as far as I know, does not have that, and it is a beautiful story, a beautiful game. It does lack, speaking of the story, though, it kind of lacks that continuum of the Adam Eve eating the apple story. Uh, it, 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 to me, it was very confusing. It talks about these uh, creators of humanity, um, but it kind of doesn't, that main central storyline of the assassins, it kind of didn't expand on it at all, like uh, uh, Assassin's Creed 2 did, 3 did, uh, Unity, I know, kind of straight away. But this game is a must-have. Um, if 
if you're a fan of the open world, if you're a fan of uh, Victorian or the, uh, I call it like industrial steampunk era um, of England, very, very, very good game. Very good game. Okay, and the one that I'm currently playing, and, um, one uh, YouTuber I watch, uh, Escape to Gaming, um, it will know this one very much, and that's this. If it weren't for him, Dean, uh, I would not have gotten this game. I probably would have gotten it in a bargain bin, but he harped about this game so much, I'm like, okay, I've got to get this, and I am thoroughly enjoying it. It is true what people say uh, in the reviews. It's like, okay, go to this location. In a way, it, Destiny does this, too. Go to this location, kill these guys in the exact same way you just killed them before, um, and then go find more stuff. Okay, this is a game to, it's like a good piece of steak, just savor it and enjoy it. Um, it is true. It's repetitive in parts. That is very, very true. Um, but just take the game for what it is. Don't rush through it, because if you do rush through it, and I think this was an issue with many players that, probably talk negative about this game. If you rush through it with just the main storyline, you will die. Um, you've got to go to different strongholds. You've got to collect a lot of scrap. You've got to level up your character. You've got to level up your car, uh, build your car. Um, you've got to do those side quests. This is a game that kind of forces you to do those side quests, and if you don't do it, forget it. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get through it. Now, personally, me, I've played this, I don't know how many hours I've got into it. Um, I have fully leveled up the character. I have not yet fully leveled up the car. Um, I would dare say I'm about halfway through the game. Uh, in the map, you have to clear out maps and the dangers in the maps with your allies. Uh, there's like, right now I found three allies, Jeet, uh, and then there's a ship, I can't remember the guy's name, starts with a G, and then, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite characters I've run into so far, Pink Eye, an older lady who's, uh, lost her legs, and she's handicapped, and, um, it's her area that I'm working on right now, and eventually I think you're trying to get to Gas Town, which, uh, to meet Scrotus, who's the ultimate boss. And all these factions of Scrotuses you're trying to eliminate and kill and uh, driving um, throughout the world and running into enemies and, uh, and cars are trying to run you off the road. You get into these big-ass car battles. It's just a beautiful game. So early on in the year, well, I don't want to say early on in the year, even maybe a few months ago, here's the issue. I have not run into this issue, and because I didn't start playing this game from day one. And I believe there were four patches, major patches, delivered to this game. Um, and um, one was a very, was a game-breaking patch. And if you want, you can look up some uh, YouTubes, look for Escape escape to gaming i'm sorry about this i'm gonna let me there okay i just muted my sound um you can look up on youtube escape to gaming and watch dean thompson's vlogs about this game there was a really bad uh, glitch that I did not run into, but from what I understand, what happened are your, is your save, save data, which is, for the most part, for every game, which I'm going to get into next, um, it's saved in the cloud. And it's just the problem is, um, I guess with this game, is it got corrupt. Some of the save data got corrupt or something. But anyway, it would not show the map. You had no clue which way to go on the map. And this happened near, like, when you were ready to finish a game. And he about split his game in two. He was so mad, um, which I understand. This happened to me with Gears of War 3 many years ago. Where, no, it might have been Gears of War 2, not 3. But I was trying to work on the Seriously 2 achievement. 
which was, I believe, killing 30,000, no, 100,000 enemies. And I was one third of the way there. I was like almost at 40,000. All of a sudden, I came home one day, turned on the game, and it like unlocked all these things like I was level one. I'm like, what the fuck happened here? Well, it turns out that one of my save uh, uh, data saves was corrupt or something. I was so mad at this beautiful game at the time, Gears of War 2. So I fully understand, Dean, where you're coming from with this. Hopefully, I've not run into any glitches. Yeah, a few maybe frame rate things, and I think once or twice a game has froze on me where I've had to just restart and everything's fine. Um, but this is an amazing game. Okay, so yeah. So, yeah, people are like, oh, Brad, you've only got four games. Okay. I don't only have four games. Um, I probably have hundreds of games. But the ones, these are the ones I'm mentioning. And I am going to go and talk about another game I'm playing right now, which is digital. It's a free-to-play game. Let me go down my little indie games free-to-play. I know I already spoke to Ori. Um, Valiant Hearts. And I don't even think that came out this year, but I still need to get through that. Uh, Telltale Borderlands. Telltale, uh, Walking Dead, Season 1. And I speak of these games because they actually happen to come out for free. Uh, I don't know if it was just with the Xbox Live Gold uh, package or if they've always been free, but I happen to download these for free. And those I've not finished yet. Um, the Assassin's Creed China I've played. I've not even finished it yet. Uh, and I know next month they're coming out with... Uh, Russia and India. Now, I can't remember which one's first, but I think one's in January and one's in February, which I'll get both of them. Even if they're not free to play, I'm going to get them. Uh, but those are what I call more uh, app games or indie games. They're not like AAA games. Um, I'm trying to think of another, because there's one that I want to talk about. Um, I'm trying to think of the ones that are in my queue. Uh, anyway, um, I don't want to digress into trying to think about what I have. I'm trying to picture, visualize my uh, Xbox, which I know I can just get on this computer and just take a, uh, you know, stream my Xbox right now, take a snapshot of what I have. Um, but one game that I'm spending a lot of hours with, because I also like these simple little puzzle games, kind of like Bejeweled, and that's exactly what this game is. It's made by 505 Industries. Um, it's just an excellent game that I actually played years ago, and I stumbled upon it just browsing through games the other day. It is a free-to-play game uh, called Gears of, no, yeah, I want to say Gears of War, Gems of War. It's called Gems of War, and it is a wonderful, kind of in a way, makes me think back to the days of Magic cards, uh, because... All these characters that you have and all these different lands that you have to go through. Um, each card has a, is an individual with unique stat and has different, I think there's five or six different gem-based mana types. And some characters have one, for instance, you might just have Earth, and when you collect Earth, then you can use your special skill. Some have two. I don't know. I don't want to get into it too much, but... You can search Gems of War. I know it comes out on iOS. It comes out on just about every platform. It's a free to play. Very enjoyable. And if you're into that type of like bejeweled kind of experience mixed with RPG elements, that is a game to go get. And that is also a game I, I think it, it is free to play, but to buy like gems for you can actually dress your main person with armor that has some abilities, unique abilities. Um, for this game, I've spent maybe $10, I think, just buying some gems or something. I know that's not a lot either, because another game that I play, that I enjoy, just kind of a side game, is uh, Dragon Mania. I love that game. I probably have spent about $100 on that, even though it's a free-to-play game. Um that's another kind of side game, like, oh, my God, i got to get in and collect the gold, and i got to do these battles. And it, it's like these games 
come at you with these daily quests, kind of like Destiny does. And I was also into that Destiny thing. I was like, I was like, um, with Destiny, it's like, oh, I've got to do my daily missions. Okay, it's like I got to stop this mindset. And uh, Dragon Mania soon. You breed dragons. You battle dragons. They have their own little community. And you have to build up your gold to buy more land and build different things. It, it's a very good game too. And I think it's also available for. In, in fact, that's not even an Xbox One game. Um, I've got it for Windows 10. Um, but I, it, it's available over multiple platforms. Okay, so. Those were my main games for 2015. Looking ahead to 2016, one game right now, and that's Gears of War 4, uh, that I have my eyes on. There's a, there's a few games, but that's at the top of the list. Um, Mirror's Edge, the new one coming out, uh, Scalebound. I can't wait for that game, too, because that looks totally amazing. Xbox One exclusive, I believe. Um, there's this, it's just, there's not too much coming out that I'm really looking for. Uh, their indie game, Cupcake, I can't remember the whole name of the game, but that looks excellent. And uh, I'm sure there's several more, but just sitting on the top of my uh, head in my list for next year, Gears of War, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, uh, and uh, Scalebound. Uh, those games I'm really looking forward to. I ho I know there's going to be more coming out. Um, like, for instance, okay, let me kind of segue into this uh, gaming for the year, too, also. Uh, I was just thinking of Star Wars again. Um, early next year, Star Wars, I hope, comes down on price. I am not going to pay $60 for a game that is only, from what I understand, and I hear this from a lot of people, uh, maybe the first hour is enjoyable to play. And it's all online, all multiplayer. Uh, single player element, from what I understand, of the DLC coming out, they have to spend another $50 for. Yeah, this is just crap. It's terrible. Games, I don't know, these game companies are like, oh, well, we know what the consumers want. Uh, listen to us, though. There are a growing number of people that are tired of this online-only multiplayer crap. Um, there are single-player games. Okay, single-player, single-player. These are the games I'm going to buy. They might have an online element, and they do. Uh, saving the game online, you, it's like, okay, you have to be online to play this. I dare say, and I've not tried this, but I'd like to try it. I'm going to take my Xbox uh, One offline and put this in and see if it will play, but I doubt it will because I think it goes somehow to the Internet and won't be able to get the save data. So all games nowadays, and I and I, I agree with this in a way, um, all games nowadays do have some sort of online element. But don't bring me the bull crap of, oh, this is online multiplayer only. Okay, I do have to say, Crackdown 3, they say, is going to run totally in a cloud. It will have the power of a cloud. So I'm very, very curious and interested to see how that one plays out. Um, but based on Dean's rant with uh, Mad Max and everything that happened, I probably had, I don't know, six, seven games on pre-order at GameStop. I am no longer pre-ordering any game. I'm going to wait and see. There's no reason to go out and get the game on day one. Okay, Gears of War 4, yeah, maybe, uh, which I'll be getting. I uh, The last game I got standing in line at midnight was Gears of War 3. Um, but Gears of War 4, I'll probably go out at midnight, stay in the line. Um, oh, my God. It'll probably come out on Election Day next year. I'm trying to think. I think Election Day is November 8th, which is Tuesday. And watch. It's going to come out on that day. Uh, anyway. Okay. So, yeah, my the gaming industry for 2015 it seems like they're not listening to the people. I know there's change, and I know we have to move with change. We have to accept change. And 
really, for instance, Crackdown 3. I agree with this. If it plays totally in the cloud and has no glitches, and it is a beautifully done game, okay, I'm fine with that. I'm good with that. But these, you're paying $60 for these games. $60. I just have four here, so what, $240 just for four games sitting here. Um, the, it sounds like most of the time, and I heard this about Just Cause 3, which I have no desire to play anyway, but they come out broken. But like on day one, you have this huge ass patch that you've got to download on day one just to play the freaking game. That's got to stop. Another thing is about the online gameplay, and this is this is a negative. Um, okay, so my so this is online. What in ten years? What if in ten years I wanted to go play this? I'm like, yeah, Chris, you remember this Taken King game? Let's go play it. I will bet you anything in five to ten years, this disc will not be able to be played. It won't be able to be played. I don't know if it will do to, uh, uh, like, Activision saying, you know what, nobody's playing this anymore, let's turn off these servers. Where a game like, oh, uh, for instance, okay, I just got an Xbox original console. I did that this year, too, and I bought a Jedi Outcast with it. But Jedi Outcast, you know what? I can pop it in, I can play it. And how old is that game? I don't remember what year it came out, but how old is that game? If I wanted to, Chris does this many times. He has many PS2, PS3 games. Uh, he wants to go back and play. He just pops in the disc and he plays it. Um, can that be said to these online games in the future? And... I guess technically, yes, like if Crackdown 3 happens to be a digital download and you're downloading the whole game, um, because I also believe, even like this, I also believe, uh, maybe even with Mad Max, all of these games, the whole game is not on this disc. I think just part of this is on the disc, and for the most part, you are actually playing in the cloud. <coughs> but also... Where does that leave uh, people in the world that don't that want to play games and don't have internet access, let alone high speed internet access? Um, I've worked with people at my former job that say they have to use uh, their kids have to use the 4G um, for their Xbox because they don't they live out in like the country country area, not a rural area, a very rural area, and they don't have access to high-speed internet. Yeah, they can do HughesNet, but I've also heard HughesNet is not that reliable, not that good for um, gaming. I, for, okay, I am going to insert, insert a political opinion right here. I firmly believe, and I truly hope, that this United States government is going away of making the Internet a utility. I think that would open up many, 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 many things. Make it a utility just like you pay your garbage, you pay your water, you pay your uh, cable bill. And yes, technically, cable bill meaning, you know, like I pay my U-verse bill and, and the Internet's part of it. But make it a utility like your electric Um Make it very cheap. Make it very affordable. And I mean high speed. Not just some slow dial-up speeds. Uh, I think ours, which ours works fine. Through Uverse, we've got the top one, which I think is 16 meg. It's only a 4 meg upload. I think it's a 16 meg. I don't know. Whatever their highest is, but you know what? It works fine. We have the wireless. I've got this computer. It happens to be on wireless. Um, I've got my Surface. We've got our phone, although we do turn the wireless off on the phones and just use the uh, data plan. Um, Chris has his. He's got his PS3. He's got his PS4. He's got an Xbox One. I've got an Xbox One. We are so connected in this house. Granted, not everything's on all at the same time. Um, but we've, we've got amazing 
uh, speed. And I, my wish, and this would be my wish for 2016, one of my technical wishes is that everybody has access to high-speed internet. That is something I firmly, firmly endorse. And not just for gaming, but other things. Um, so, yeah, until that point, I, I tend to think that these companies, Xbox being one of them, and if every, anybody knows me, I'm a huge Microsoft Xbox fanboy. Um, but Xbox, two or three years ago when they came out with the Xbox One, made a huge mistake. And from, and this is my opinion again. And I can't remember the guy's name, uh, whoever was before Phil Spencer, the guy that all of a sudden after that E3 left. Um, but I think they're trying to rush technology. and They're trying to shove it in our face and cram it down our throats like, hey, we've got this technology now and you are going to live with it. That's what Microsoft did, and that's a mistake. Gradually roll out these changes. Don't make everything you can do possible because not you know, like uh, putting uh, Star Wars Battlefront totally in the cloud. Don't do that because there are people out there that cannot. They may want to play Battlefront like there's no tomorrow, but they can't do it because they don't have access. They don't have that technology. Um, and don't forget about a single-player game, gamers out there. I, I have to say the last best single-player game, when I, whenever I think about single-player games in my mind, it's like, boom, Bioshock comes up. Bioshock 1. Again, like I was talking about multiplayer earlier, Bioshock 2 was not perfect because they added a multiplayer element into it. But Bioshock 1 is one of my top games ever since I've been a gamer for, I dare say, yeah, 30, 40 years. I'm 30 to 40 years. Um, so 2015 technology-wise for gaming, I think, was crap. And I hope we're a growing voice in the gaming community that we're not going to put up with this crap anymore. You can talk, you can email, whatever. You can do vlogs. Uh, is Activision going to watch my vlog? I highly doubt it. I can write to Activision. I can email them. But that's not going to work. What is going to work is the power of the pocketbook. And if I go buy someday Battlefront for... $20, say, at GameStop, because it's used, that money does not go to Activision. That's the, yeah, GameStop's going to get that money, because they own that game, and they're selling it to me. Activision's not going to get any of it. But it's the power of the pocketbook, canceling your pre-orders. If everybody went out and canceled their pre-orders right now, all of these game companies would probably shit their pants uh, big time. They're like, oh, what the fuck happened? Um the power of the pocketbook, because unfortunately, too many things in this country are run by the almighty dollar. And there's a lot more to life than money. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but getting into my uh, my new job, for the people that know me, I love, absolutely love this new job. And yes, I took a huge pay cut. Um, but was it worth it? Yes. For my sanity, for my family's sake. 100% worth it. So, yeah, power of the pocketbook. It, unfortunately, money speaks volumes, and in this country it does. Um, and if more and more and more people stopped paying cash money for these games on day one. Look at Halo 5. I'm a, I'm a big Halo fan. I don't even have Halo 5 yet. I'm, am I going to get it? Yeah, I'll probably get it early next year. I know, that I think it's this week they're delivering a huge add-on. And to me, what makes me happy about that, too, and makes me want to go out and get it more now, is it sounds like they're doing um, kind of like what uh, Bungie is doing. Well, you know, 343 Industries, Bungie. Um, which I know they're two separate entities, but I know they uh, hold each other's hand, too. Um, but it, it sounds like 
Yeah, Halo 5 to me is more of a, um, it's got huge multiplayer. Yes, I know that. And it, but it's very good multiplayer. Um, but it's not forcing you to team up and do things. Um, but it's also got the, uh, single story mission, which actually this is why I have not bought it yet, but I heard disappointing things about how it's too short, does not deliver on all the hype that came out before it. Um, but from what I hear, 343 Industries is like what Bungie does is each month or each quarter, they're going to start delivering things to the users and the players of the game. Um, the Forge maps coming out next week, from what I understand. Uh, and Bonnie, I can't think of her name, but the head of the Halo franchise, she at the Game Awards said that they'll be delivering things to players each uh, you know, every so often. And that, I think, is wonderful. That is one good thing about the power of online. So, anyway, guys, I, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. It's going on 40 minutes now. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys have a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you guys celebrate. Happy New Year. Hug your loved ones. Um be blessed for everything you have. Be thankful for everything you have. That does not cost money. Um, so, guys, yeah, I'm sure I will have, this is my just wrap-up for gaming for the end of the year. I'm sure I'll probably have a short vlog uh, around Christmas time and New Year's. And, yes, may the Force be with those who are going to watch The Force Awakens. And you guys have, yeah, a blessed new year. Take care and happy gaming to everyone.